Earth, a miraculous place on which we live, is full of people from all over the world. Today the Earth is a large melting pot for people from all over with different beliefs and religions. Uruguay is an immigration country amongst 196 other larger and smaller independent countries. By today, many countries, including Uruguay, have established their relationships with other countries and their boundaries of land. These boundaries were not always set in stone. It takes a walk down memory lane to see the true importance and effort held between our boundaries. In present day, you will realize that nearing the bottom of South America, Uruguay is sandwiched in between the two largest countries in South America. Many people see Argentina and Brazil far before they even consider Uruguay. Even though 68,037 square miles may not seem like a lot, every corner within Uruguay is possessed by beautiful sights and miraculous events, and definitely worth its own story. Argentina and Brazil have enormously impacted the development of Uruguay. Many people may now question how this trio has influenced the country's independent growth and relationships. The two countries have been great guardians for Uruguay, but it's time to shine the spotlight on Uruguay and its tale. Through good and bad, Argentina and Brazil have been there, but what makes the 3.407 million Uruguayans who they are? Uruguay is filled with many different people. They celebrate this unique trait within their history. The Spanish and Portuguese influences stemming from Argentina and Brazil have influenced the growth of Uruguay in multiple ways. Uruguay's religion and race was raised by the fighting parents that it stands guarded by. Uruguay today is a complete mixture of people from everywhere across the globe. Uruguay was brought up to inherit the genes of two large colonies, who are very well known rivalry. The Uruguayan people are a mixture of numerous beliefs and races, each brought together by a little country. Immigration has always been a part of Uruguay, and it has always been a reliable factor in its fate. For millions of years ago, Uruguay has always been a solution of at least two compounds. Uruguay was first discovered by the Chara, a violent tribe. The Chara drove off any settlers that wanted to land in the present day Uruguay, but passed a Banda Oriental. This tribe had a decent protection of their resourceful land until the powerful Spanish and Portuguese overthrew them. Once the Europeans had raided the land, the first permanent settlement began in 1624. The Chara began to move farther up north as the Spanish and Portuguese gained more power of the land. As the Spanish and Portuguese started to verge into each other, a colonial rival was envisioned at its beginnings. A war was debated back and forth over the Banda Oriental, and soon both countries released their anger and gathered their, their standing regions for war. The Argentine and Brazilian colonies gathered and released their anger along the shore side of the Pacific Ocean. The countries fought for the power and resources held within the region. A rebellious invasion was presented by the Argentine beginning the Cisplantine War. The war was filled with raising armies fighting for power and value. The colonial rivalry expanded to a war that relieved all the power and weakness between the countries. The countries fought to hold the 68,037 square miles of resources. The Empire of Brazil and Argentina fought to hold the rich resources that the Banda Oriental Territory had. The Cispantine War held many battles. In 1825, Argentine Uruguayan patriots rebelled against Brazil's denial of releasing the Banda Oriental into the hands of its patrons. Argentina scrambled together an army and began defending their beliefs. With Brazil attacking, Argentina elected their first president, Bernardino Rivadia. In De December 1825, they did elect the president. With a large disadvantage in forces, Argentina struggled to defend their ground, but they were resourceful and hung on to the ropes as long as they could. The Empire of Brazil and Argentina each wanted the land for similar reasons. They fought for what we know as the second smallest country in South America. Each country fought to add to their own land, using all the help they could gather. The Empire of Brazil used their National Guard, Imperial and European mercenaries. On the other hand, Argentina fought with the United Provinces of Rio de la Plata, their regular army and navy, and the help of the 33 Orientals. The Brazilians were launched with far more strength and power, but didn't quite manipulate all their strengths into all their battles. One of the first major battles was the Battle of Serendi. The Argentine won the battle with only 30 casualties. Fought on February 20, 1827, the Battle of Izotong, 
resulted in an Argentinian tactical victory. This battle conducted a boundary that still stands along with more than 16,000 casualties. The Battle of Juncal was fought near Juncal Island within the Uruguay River. The Argentine Navy declared a victor along with only 17 men killed. At sea, the Battle of Monte Santiago resulted in a Brazilian victory, but did not lead them to success. The countries fought back and forth, only losing more than what they started with. Both countries had lastly lost enough and decided to withdraw their armies. They decided to give the Banda Oriental territory to the Uruguayan patriots. The Uruguayans had fought on both sides during the war, hoping they would get the land in order to strive their own democracy. The Uruguayans had proposed such ideas in the past, but they finally received after many rejections. The powerful countries agreed that giving the land to its patriots would lead to peace between the rivalries, and none of them won the war or lost. The small area of land is what created war, but Uruguayans then created peace with them. The Cisplantine War was a major event in the faith of Argentina, Brazil, and Uruguay. Today, the three countries respect their history but embrace their connections. The countries hold a tight relationship and they help each other out in times of hardships. The war provided many benefits for the countries. Within Uruguay, many people speak the adopted Spanish from Argentina, but on the borders, most people have also adopted Portuguese in their daily dialogue. All in all, the shared history between the three countries has resulted into a tight bond that hopefully never runs out. After the Paraguayan War from 1864 to 1870, a tragic event came to occur on Uruguay. About a hundred years later, another event happened. The military force of Uruguay took over the country. This was a shock to all their people as the military took over it and they tortured the people. Years went on, citizens started to disappear they, and were hushed currency of their everyday lives. At this time, they, they had the most political prisoners in the world. Uruguay's tradition, the democratic traditions, were at a turning point. 1980, the generals tried to authorize their positions as leaders. To do this, they revised the constitution. For a chance of opposing views to be mentioned, the result is expected from a foregone conclusion. The public voted no. Even though this result made no immediate impact, they were severely damaged. Next two to three years, Uruguay's economy worsens once again. The general saw a return to the civilization, rule, and one, as one opinion. They held an election in November 8, 1980. Presidential election of 1984 was won by the Colorado candidate Julio Martinez Sanjuinti. His his rise to power is at this stage and still on the surface of the generals, and he was able to return full democracy by giving the generals am amnesty for the human rights abuses of the past 11 years. This measure, though no doubt necessary in circumstances, lack of a wide support in electorate. How, after the years of horror, the people wanted criminal trials and payback. However, in 1989, the city had, has calmed. A poll on the issue gives support to the pardon. In the first free election since the military dictatorship in 1989, the Blanco Party makes one of its rare returns to power. But in 1994, the Colorado, Colorados are back. At least in the presidency, when Sanguiti wins a second term. The, Mar the Margarine was extremely small in what now is a three-way party. Colorado's had 32... 32.2% of the party, the Blancos had 30, 31.4%, and the Progressive and Counterparty had 30.8%. The result in alliance government and clear evidence that Uruguay has returned to its traditional democracy in 1990. My information I've gotten was from www.historyworld.net. Uruguay, with its captivating culture, cold beaches, and friendly people, is one of the smallest countries in South America. 
sandwiched between Brazil and Argentina. With its 3,429,000 individuals, Uruguay isn't much of a tourist country, but there are so many engaging topics to grasp at. Montevideo, inhabited with over half of Uruguay's population, is a main port city. Uruguay might seem like a dull random place, but the topic I haven't brought up that will intrigue you is religion. What we are all wondering is, what impacted the religion of Uruguay from ancient times until now and what made them believe that? To answer this question, let me guide you through the churches of history. As you may have a religion of your own, you might be pleased to know the religions of others. Religion in Uruguay doesn't rival between two beliefs like other countries. These race of people happen to accept the Catholicism of their culture. Catholic people stay through baptism, communion, and confirmation. Almost 47% of people in 2006 believed in the Holy Christ. That is almost half the people in Uruguay out of 3,429,000 inhabitants. Next in line are the non-religious folks who don't want to stay in religion. Around 40% of Uruguayans don't believe in gods or spirits. 8% of Uruguayans are protesting. As for the other 2%, these individuals either believe in Umbanda, a blended African Catholic religion with indigenous beliefs, or Judaism, consisting of Jews that thought God was their holy king. As from 2006 until now, the religious beliefs have changed dramatically for nine years. The Catholicism has dropped to a whopping 42%. Of the individuals who don't care about religion has risen to 47%. The Protestants has lowered to 8%. The Umbanda religion and Judaism has slightly increased only to finish off the lonely 3%. Now you are all probably wondering what caused this change in religion. The Europeans had a pretty big impact on the religion of Uruguay. Not just religion, but the Europeans constantly immigrating have changed the lives of fellow Uruguayans. The early settlers from Europe have brought unreligious Umbanda, Judaism, Catholic, and other people to Uruguay, affecting the religion in Uruguay. The Europeans just being there impacted the whole civilization of Uruguay. Europeans always trying to get what they want, established churches, assembled groups of people for religious meetings, and so much more unthinkable things. 4,000 years ago, it was believed to be that the Cholula people were the indigenous tribe that first set foot on the grounds of what is now Uruguay. Anism, their ancient belief, was sacred to their tribe. Their acceptance of gods and spiritual essences led them to a good life until the settlers and founders of Uruguay came in. The Portuguese explorers during 1512 explored the land for its beauty. Juan Diaz de Solis the leader of the successful expedition found an absence of gold and silver. As you know, the greedy Spanish tried to overtake this land, but in 1624 the first territory was founded by the Portuguese, claiming that they had fought to earn this land. Fights raged out between the two countries, and as several other cities were found, the Portuguese gained superiority. Montevideo, the country's capital, was founded in the 18th century soon to become their most populated and impactful city. Finally, on August 25, 1825, the Portuguese, who have gained respect over the Spanish and won their part of the fight, founded the country we now call Uruguay. The president of Uruguay in 1833, Rivera, tried to get rid of the Teruel people because they were useless to their society. With all of the massacres that present throughout the 19th century caused, Uruguay eventually became a peaceful place. The religion from the 21st century and the country in general has stayed as a peaceful country. No raging fights, no disrespect against different countries. Uruguay is in a world kind of a country, and that is good because their citizens are happy. Their religion, as of now, has changed by the influence of immigrating settlers, as I informed you earlier. At first, the country of Uruguay might not seem like a paradise. But now, since I got the chance to study it, it has a fascinating culture. The religion of Uruguay didn't seem like an interesting topic, but the facts interest me as I continued my research. Uruguay, with its 3,429,000 people as of today, continues to grow as a country and as a culture.